Hey everyone, welcome to the show today. We are going to jump right into it and talk about and answer the question, why is my second floor or the upstairs always warmer than the main floor? Now there's really going to be several reasons for that, but we're going to focus in on probably what most of you may be dealing with. So I've got a drawing here of a home with two levels. Now all this stuff here, let's, let's walk through this real quick. So what we've got is um, we've got a split system unit. Now what that looks like, you may be outside your home and you have a box out there. It's probably gray, has a fan on top of the box, and it, it has two lines that run into the house. That's called the condenser coil. Those lines will run up to, if you're on a slab home, most likely your furnace will be in the attic. This is what we call a split system unit. It's one system that's split apart. Now on this particular style, it's very common to see a split system unit, especially if you have a slab uh, for your foundation. So the furnace would be up in the attic. Now, one problem that you may experience, and it may be happening about this time of the year when temperatures start to cool down and you turn the heat on. In the summertime, it's a completely different set, pretty much opposite from what we're talking about now. But if your thermostat, and that's gonna be the purple box right here, if your thermostat is located on the second floor. Keep in mind, this is what determines this operation of this unit. That's the brains behind everything. So if you set that thermostat, let's say you set the thermostat to, you like it 72 degrees upstairs, okay? If you set it to 72 degrees, that thermostat is going to kick on and it's going to run until the temperature at the thermostat reaches 72 degrees. Now. Down here, we know that the main floor is usually always going to be cooler due to what's called uh, the stack effect or thermal effect. Now, what the thermal effect is, you, you've seen this many, many times. Cold air um, will stay on the bottom of uh, or the lowest point, and the hot air will, will rise up to the top. Okay, this is what we would call a thermal effect. Cold air stays lower to the bottom while hot air rises, okay? So, so if you've set that thermostat to 72 degrees on the second floor and it achieves that temperature up there, it's going to be 72, 73 degrees. Where down here, you may only get to 68 degrees or maybe less. So you're already seeing a temperature difference. Okay, and that's pretty significant, five degree difference between floors. Now it gets even worse, for instance, let's just erase this thermostat, okay? And let's pretend now that the thermostat is on the bottom floor. So if your thermostat is down here on the bottom floor, we'll say it's on the back wall, and you set that thermostat to 72 degrees, all right? We can go ahead and erase that. So that thermostat's now going to run until this area achieves 72 degrees. If this hits to 72 degrees, okay, now because of this thermal effect, that warm air is going to rise, not to mention all the vents that are putting out air up here. You might get upwards of 78 to 80 degrees on this floor. And that's quite even bigger temperature swing than you would see if the thermostat was up here. Remember, it's going to always be warmer on this second floor if you only have one thermostat. This is what we would call a non-zoned non system, okay? That means only one thermostat controlling both areas or floors of the house. Now, a zone system is a little bit different. Zone system basically means that you have two thermostats that would be working in conjunction. We replace this thermostat up here, okay? And you'll also have what's called a damper somewhere located up here on this unit that will open and close the air to each floor based upon the command from the floor. So you have a much better opportunity to have closer to these temperatures if you have a zoned system. All right. Now, what can be done if you don't have a zone system? And let's say we go back to one thermostat. All right. One thermostat in the property and you set to 72. 
but we're getting 78 or 80 degrees at the top floor. There's not much you can do in terms of additions to this system. Some will say that, well, there's thermostats that have um, sensors that you can put in different rooms. So you put a sensor in this room and a sensor in this room. Let's just say you upgrade your thermostat to one that has uh, sensors on it and you hang them in these rooms and you want it to be 72 up here. Well, it's going to do the same thing. Once this achieves 72 degrees, um, it's going to obviously shut off and it's going to be cooler on this main floor regardless. Or everything's going to try to hit 72 degrees and that system is going to just run continually to try to achieve that. It's not going to be possible. But the only thing that you can do is to shut some of the vents in the winter time, the supply vents, you're going to shut some of those vents off in, in the, in the uh, winter time. And that's going to basically minimize that, that warm air flow. So you shut some of these vents off, maybe leave one vent on and let air come out. This warm air that you get down here from the vents, remember the red air would be the heat. The green is the intake. So one intake per floor, it goes into the unit, turns over to heat, and then it exhausts out through the supply vents. So you could maybe shut two, or if you have four registers at the second floor, maybe you can shut three of them or two of them and just leave one open in each area, minimizing that airflow and helping to push more air down through these. And hopefully maybe you could reduce this, this temperature difference of let's say you're running a eight eight degree temperature difference and maybe you can get that down to maybe three or four degree temperature difference if you try to equalize some of those vents at this stage you can't install a zoned uh, system on the same unit because the duct work would have to be reconfigured for airflow so i hope this is a quick short video explaining why you may be seeing um, temperature differences on the second floor especially in the wintertime, it's going to be always warmer. Remember, the only thing you really can do is to selectively shut off a few of the vents up there and, uh, and open the ones down here. Vice versa, in the summertime, it'll be a completely different, almost opposite effect of what you want to happen. So you would want to shut off a few of the vents down here in the summertime, open up all of them up here in an effort to try to equalize that temperature. Okay, hope that short video helps you to understand why you may be experiencing temperature differences in your home. If you have any questions, comments, leave them, leave them below. Love to answer them, and thanks for watching.